wonderful if you've ever heard a commanding voice that uh, compels you to pay attention. Uh, see it on the, uh, the rugby, we just had the Six Nations, these very little diminutive referees who can command these great hulking rugby players because they've got authority. And I think we see in this passage the commanding voice of Jesus. And uh, it's in teaching, in controlling demons, and in dismissing disease. And we'll take those uh, in reverse order. Uh, uh, from this passage in Luke 4. First of all then, uh, Jesus with his commanding voice rebuking disease. Uh, Jesus rebuking disease. Uh, it's there in verses 38 and 39 after uh, speaking in the synagogue. Uh, Jesus uh, leaves and goes to the home of Simon, uh, Simon Peter that is. Now Simon's mother-in-law was suffering from a high fever and they asked Jesus to help her so he bent over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. She got up at once and began to wait on them. Uh, Simon Peter, uh, evidently married uh, and uh, uh, living here in Capernaum. Uh, Capernaum is a, uh, a village town on the northwest shore of the Sea of Galilee, near to the uh, Jordan River, where the Jordan River comes into the Sea of Galilee. Uh, his uh, mother-in-law uh, uh, is suffering from a high fever. Uh, literally, she is held by a high fever. We might say today she's in the grip of a high fever, a great fever uh, that is uh, debilitating. Well, uh, uh, Jesus uh, bends over her. I wonder if that is to give her a sense of his presence, <laughs> uh, that here he is present. Uh, and so he bends over this uh, feverish, uh, woman, uh, and he rebuked the fever. Uh, there was a very helpful uh, quote in the book that we've been studying at, at our midweek meetings uh, re relating to uh, uh, disease uh, and uh, so on. I just want to uh, remind you uh, what was said there. He says, we tend to think of the miracles of the Gospels as interruptions in the natural order. Yet the German theologian Jürgen Moltmann uh, points out that miracles are not an interruption of the natural order, but the restoration of the natural order. We are so used to a fallen world that sickness, disease, pain and death seem natural. In fact, they are the interruption. And then he quotes uh, Moltmann. When Jesus expels demons and heals the sick, he is driving out of creation the powers of destruction and is healing and restoring created beings who are hurt and sick. The lordship of God to which the healings witness restores creation to health. Jesus' healings are not supernatural miracles in a natural world. They are the only natural thing in a world that is unnatural, demonized and wounded. I thought that was a helpful reflection on uh, uh, this uh, uh, miracle that Jesus uh, performs. Jesus rebuked the fever and it left her. Uh, Richard Lenski, the commentator, says to speak was to express his will and what that will willed was instantly done. Uh, notice that the cure was both sudden and complete. The fever left her and she got up at once and began to wait on them. She didn't need some recuperation and uh, uh, rest to recover from the fever. Uh, no, she got up at once and began serving uh, those who had come uh, to the house. Uh, the cure was sudden and complete. And so we have the commanding voice of Jesus. He rebukes the disease, this fever, debilitating, uh, 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 and it loses, her, it loses its hold uh, on his mother-in-law, uh, and she recovers and serves them. The commanding voice of Jesus in uh, rebuking disease. But then also notice the commanding voice of Jesus in controlling demons. 
and that's both uh, in the synagogue uh, and then later uh, outside uh, Peter's home uh, later that evening. Uh, Jesus uh, demonstrates his uh, commanding control over demons. He both silences them and casts them out. Uh, Jesus has control over uh, demons, the evil spirits. We just need to uh, think about them for a moment. Uh, demons are fallen angels who are intent on evil, but they are created beings under the control of the creator. They are not outside of God's control. He created them. Uh, he has power over them. Uh, and it's that power that's in, in demonstration here uh, in the uh, miracle. Uh, and uh, we discover uh, in scripture that uh, people uh, uh, have a demon. Now, that's actually the, the literal translation in verse 33. In the synagogue, there was a man who had a demon. I'm not sure speaking of people being possessed by demons is the best concept. Uh, the Bible speaks of uh, people having a demon or who are demonized uh, is another phrase that's used. Uh, uh, and it can be a, a singular demon. There can be multiple demons. Mary Magdalene had seven demons. Uh, and remember the man uh, uh, by the uh, uh, Gennesaret uh, who was kept in chains and in tombs. He had uh, the legion uh, of demons. Uh, so demons can uh, be multiple. Uh, they uh, occur, it occurs in the Old Testament. Um, uh, you remember uh, King Saul uh, when he was uh, rejected uh, from being king in 1 Samuel chapter 16 and verse 14. Now the spirit of the Lord had departed from Saul and an evil spirit from the Lord tormented him. That's a reminder that God is in control. But this uh, evil spirit from the Lord tormented King Saul. David, playing his music, could temporarily dislodge the evil spirit, but it evidently returned. David didn't have the power of Jesus in casting out demons. Uh, but there, uh, there was uh, Saul uh, there in the Old Testament. Uh, children uh, uh, can have a, a, a demon. Uh, you remember the woman uh, from Sidon whose daughter was uh, uh, controlled by that demon or distressed by the demon uh, and uh, the man at the foot of the Mount of Transfiguration whose son, his only son, uh, had uh, the demon that the disciples couldn't cast out. So children can be uh, controlled uh, 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 by demons. That's perhaps a, a suggestion that it's not necessarily sin that leads to uh, the control of a, a, the demon uh, of a person or uh, there are other, uh, well, it's hidden from us, the mechanisms uh, by which this comes about. Uh, sometimes there are physical ailments connected with uh, people having a demon. Uh, we read of some who are blind uh, and dumb. The woman who for 18 years had been bent over. Sometimes there's a physical aspect uh, to a person having a demon. No, there is a concentration of uh, people having demons in the Gospels. That's where in the Bible, the predominant uh, uh, concentration of uh, people having demons occurs. Uh, there are a handful of occasions in the Old Testament, like Saul, there are uh, two or three others that are mentioned. Uh, we have 12 references in Luke's Gospel uh, to uh, uh, demons. There are only five in the Acts of the Apostles. There are none in the rest of the New Testament. You don't read of any in the rest of the New Testament of someone having a demon. There's a real concentration of them uh, in the Gospels. But I'm not sure where to think that their activity is less prevalent because of that. I think perhaps it's just not as obvious. Jesus, light of the world, brings to light the darkness and the powers of darkness. They are still uh, prevalent and active today, uh, but uh, uh, perhaps in uh, different ways. So we read, for instance, in Ephesians chapter 2, and verses 1 and 2, uh, Paul writes here in Ephesians 2, As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world, 
and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. So the devil is now at work in those who are disobedient. Paul speaks of his uh, activity that is uh, prevalent uh, and ongoing. Uh, similarly, in Colossians chapter 1, Colossians chapter 1 and verse 13, uh, Paul speaking of uh, uh, God's grace to us, for he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. We have been rescued from the dominion of darkness. And that's true of all believers. And so we're all uh, in that dominion uh, uh, of uh, evil. Uh, and then uh, one other reference in uh, 1 John chapter 4, 1 John chapter 4 and verse, sorry, 1 John chapter 3 and verse 8. John says, he who does what is sinful is of the devil, because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. So there, he who... Uh, he who does what is sinful is of the devil. And so the devil is still at work and active and his uh, fallen angels with him uh, still uh, uh, having an impact uh, uh, on the lives of people. Uh, so then uh, this uh, man has this demon uh, and the, uh, the demons as well that are spoken of uh, outside uh, uh, the house of Peter later. Notice that they have a knowledge of Jesus, both of his person and of his power. Uh, so uh, here in uh, uh, verse 33, in the synagogue, there was a man who had a demon, an evil spirit. He cried out at the top of his voice, Ha, what do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. They know who Jesus is, the Holy One of God. Uh, over the, uh, then uh, later in verse 41, uh, when uh, many people are brought uh, to the house, moreover it says in verse 41, demons came out of many people shouting, you are the son of God. They know who Jesus is, the son of God, the holy one of God. They know his power. Uh, in verse 34, have you come to destroy us? They recognize the power of Jesus. Uh, and uh, this uh, is a recognition of his divinity, isn't it? His person, the Son of God, the Holy One of God, his power, power to destroy them. Uh, they recognize uh, who Jesus is and his power. Uh, Jesus rebukes them. Uh, again, it's the same word in verse 35 that is used of uh, Jesus rebuking the fever. Be quiet, uh, Jesus said, rebuking them. Uh, come out of him. Uh, and similarly, uh, there in uh, verse 41, when the demons uh, came out shouting, you are the son of God, but he rebuked them and would not allow them to speak. Demon testimony is unwelcome and inappropriate. Uh, uh, remember later in Acts 16, when uh, uh, Paul and uh, uh, Barnabas uh, 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 are there and uh, uh, Paul and Silas, sorry, and the uh, slave girl is saying, These men are servants of the Most High God and telling you the way of salvation. Well, Peter, uh, uh, Paul uh, casts the demon out. It's not appropriate, it's not welcome to have demon testimony, uh, uh, even though it might be true, and it is true. It's not appropriate uh, that uh, demons should give testimony to who Jesus is uh, and uh, his. Uh, person. Uh, and so Jesus has authority over them. He can command them to shut up. He can rebuke them because he has authority. And uh, so uh, these demons, they have knowledge of Jesus and they submit to Jesus, uh, to him silencing them and uh, to uh, them being cast out and expelled uh, from these people who are suffering. The commanding voice of Jesus 
controlling demons, the powers of evil. Uh, Jesus, uh, with his commanding voice, has control uh, over them uh, and can uh, make them submit to his will uh, and uh, plan. The commanding voice of Jesus rebuking disease, controlling demons, but then uh, teaching doctrine. The commanding voice of Jesus teaching doctrine. And notice how uh, prominent that is in this passage. Uh, so we have uh, in verses 31 and 32, uh, Jesus teaching. He went down to Capernaum, a town in Galilee, and on the Sabbath began to teach the people. They were amazed at his teaching. Uh, so Jesus is teaching. Uh, there's reference to his word. Uh, they were amazed at his teaching because his message, verse 32, literally his word had authority. Uh, and again, in verse uh, 36, uh, what is, uh, all the people were amazed, said to each other, what is this teaching? What is this word? With authority and power, he gives orders to evil spirits. They come out, we have uh, teaching, we have his word. We have Jesus uh, announcing the good news. Verse 43, he said, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God uh, to other towns also. They wanted him to stay there. Jesus says, no, I've got to go elsewhere. Uh, I must preach or announce, uh, proclaim uh, uh, the good news of the kingdom. And then verse 44, we have preaching. He kept on preaching, uh, heralding in the synagogues of Judea. Uh, and I think that's the focus really of this uh, section uh, uh, that uh, Luke is, is brought together, uh, the commanding voice of Jesus in teaching. And notice that his uh, authority over demons and disease enhances and supports and underlines the authority of his teaching. Uh, there it is in verse 36. All the people were amazed and said to each other, what is this teaching? What is this word? With authority and power, he gives orders to evil spirits and they come out. It uh, was an enhancement to his word, to his message, uh, to what he taught. Uh, the fact that he had authority over evil spirits and uh, over disease uh, was uh, uh, an enhancement, an underlining of his authority to teach. Uh, and uh, to tell, to preach. Well, this tells us, doesn't it, that knowing certain truths is vital. If that's the focus of what Jesus is about here, and it is, that's what Luke's name before us, uh, and Jesus makes clear that's the focus of his mission. Uh, again, notice uh, after he has healed uh, these people and driven out demons, verse 42, uh, we're told at daybreak, Jesus went to a solitary place. The people were looking for him. When they came to where he was, they tried to keep him from leaving them. But he said, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to other towns also, because that is why I was sent to tell the good news, to announce uh, uh, good news. He kept on preaching in the synagogues. Of Judea. So knowing certain truths is vital. Experiences are secondary to understanding. Understanding truths, uh, that's what Jesus is seeking to communicate, to, to tell with authority uh, through his commanding voice. He is uh, telling people truth that they need to hear. Uh, we're told, aren't we, that he uh, it says, uh, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God uh, to other towns also. And we're going to uh, have reference to that as we work through uh, the gospel of uh, Luke uh, and what Jesus uh, teaches about the kingdom of God. But we can think just in summary, entry into it. What did Jesus say? You must be born again. No man can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born again. Uh, there must be a uh, new birth uh, that will deliver us from the kingdom of darkness and bring us into the kingdom of his dear son. There must be new life. Uh, we who were dead in our trespasses and sins, uh, following the spirit uh, uh, that is at work in all those who are disobedient, we must be born again. 
uh, by God's power. Entry into uh, God's kingdom, Jesus taught. Uh, Jesus taught about the king who rules there. Uh, Jesus himself, uh, the ruler uh, of God's kingdom, to whom we must submit uh, and bow, uh, whom we must obey. The nature of God's kingdom, uh, God's rule in our lives, uh, uh, God uh, setting the agenda for us in our living, uh, in every aspect of our lives. The fulfilment of God's kingdom in the new heaven and the new earth. All these things and more besides, Jesus taught, uh, Jesus good news, uh, the message of uh, uh, God's kingdom. And it was important that people heard these truths and understood this teaching. His authority uh, over demons and disease enhanced his authority to teach uh, and to preach uh, and to uh, tell good news. And so I, I think that's what Luke is uh, emphasizing here as he uh, repeatedly refers to Jesus uh, teaching his word, uh, uh, good newsing and preaching uh, the commanding voice of Jesus in his teaching. And uh, we hear the commanding voice of Jesus in his word. That's where we hear it today, as his word is proclaimed, uh, as the message of Jesus is uh, taught, uh, as the kingdom of heaven is uh, proclaimed. It's Jesus who uh, speaks. Uh, you remember when Paul writes to the Ephesians, uh, he says that Jesus came and preached peace to you. Well, Jesus never went to Ephesus, but through the preaching of the gospel, the, uh, that Jesus spoke uh, and addressed with his commanding voice. And so I think it's helpful to think uh, of uh, uh, the questions that uh, are posed in one of our hymns written by Vernon Hyam. Have you heard the voice of Jesus? Have you heard the voice of Jesus softly pleading with your heart? Have you felt his presence glorious as he calls your soul apart with a love so true and loyal Love divine that ever flows from a saviour, righteous, royal, and a cross that mercy shows. Have you heard the voice of Jesus granting peace and pardon pure? It's not a priest who can pronounce pardon for you, it's Jesus who pronounces pardon. Have you felt the balm of Calvary binding all your wounds secure? Was there ever such salvation? Was there ever care like this? See the Saviour's grief and passion, grace and mercy's gentle kiss. Have you heard the Saviour calling all to leave and follow him? Have you felt his person drawing with compulsion lives to win his commanding voice? Hearken to his invitation, tis the, to the music of God's grace. Let the peace of God's salvation fill your soul and love embrace. Have you heard the commanding voice of Jesus uh, 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 in your own heart uh, and soul? He speaks, as Wesley says, he speaks and listening to his voice, new life the dead receive, the mournful broken hearts rejoice, the humble poor believe the commanding voice of Jesus. He commands uh, a fever to be gone. He rebukes a fever. Uh, he rebukes these demons. They are interlopers uh, uh, in his creation. Uh, and he has authority to dismiss them. But it all enhances his teaching authority, his commanding voice, uh, uh, bringing salvation through the message of his grace uh, accomplished through him, uh, the one who is indeed the Holy One of God, who took our sin and suffered in our place, uh, rose again victorious to give us life and pardon and forgiveness 
uh, through his work. We long to hear uh, Christ's voice. We must hear Christ's voice. We long for others to hear that voice. We need to plead that he will speak with power uh, into the lives of those that we long to see transformed. Uh, yes, through our witness, uh, through uh, our word, through the uh, literature that we share with people. But we long to, we need to pray that Christ will speak with power uh, to command uh, sinners to find life in him. The commanding voice of Jesus. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the glimpse we've had of your majestic divine authority. Lord, thank you that you have the authority of God because you are God uh, in the flesh. Uh, Lord, we thank you for uh, your commanding voice. Uh, Lord, uh, dispelling uh, disease, uh, dismissing uh, demons, uh, sharing true doctrine. Uh, Lord, with those uh, who need to hear and understand and believe. Lord, uh, speak, uh, Lord, we pray. Grant us ears to hear when you speak to us in your word and by your spirit. Lord, speak to those around us, uh, dead and in the dark. Uh, Lord, uh, awaken them, we pray. Lord, hear us, uh, we ask. For your honour and glory, we pray. Amen.